Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here, and we're back to share one more piece of this beautiful conversation that Christine and I have been having with our friend and teacher of the Wolf Clan, Mark Barefoot, as he teaches us his medicine, his wisdom, his knowledge about the traditions and the culture of his people. And today we'd like to share a message. We asked Mark, Mark, if you had the audience, if you had the ears, the eyes of the American people, and maybe even the people of the world, what would you share with them? And Mark shared a beautiful message with all of us. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch the previous parts of this conversation, the links will be down in the description and up here somewhere. And now please listen to Mark's message. Open your heart, open your mind, open your spirit, and enjoy. Mark, if you could speak to the people, kind of like when the president has the State of the Union address and, you know, all the television uh, channels and everyone carries the message, what would your message to the people be? What would it be? It would be get rid of greed, become greedyless. Don't want to possess everything. Get rid of one possession, you know. You don't own nothing. You may have something that you use, but you don't own it, like, forever. So get rid of that notion that you have to own something to be happy. The scooter you, you guys helped me get, I own it now, but I'm not going to own it forever. There's a day coming when, when I'll pass and somebody else can use that scooter. In other words, I'm only holding it. Only our, in our culture, only our women can hold land because they have a connection to Mother Earth through life-giving. Man didn't hold the land because he didn't have a life-giving connection with Mother Earth. He couldn't own land, so he couldn't select a chief. That's why women could select a chief because, you know, they could put a chief in office but to help in the leaders, male leadership role, you know, to be a speaker and provider and help direct young guys and be a leader for the community. But uh, they would select a male to do that. He didn't tell anybody what to do. He just guided through actions. A woman was the only one that could hold the land because she has a natural gift. She can hold the land because she has a, something in common called life giving with the land. So we didn't have any such thing as male landowners. But Europeans, they didn't have anything such thing as female landowners. So when they came here and they, you know, our land wasn't held by men, so they didn't recognize women as existing. They, so they looked at the land like it was free to take, but we didn't own it anyway. We were just holding it. Our women held the land. We didn't, in a partnership with life. So greed is when you have a need to possess things and call it yours. And greed is, is what tears every society down and disintegrates. Greediness is an arrogance. And the only thing the Creator can ever forgive is arrogance. If you're arrogant when you pass on, you'll never seek the light. You'll never look for the light. You'll never stand in the light. Because you'll always go to away from the light because you're arrogant and you think you know better than anything. You don't have anything to apologize for because you think you're perfect. It's not that you can't think you're good, it's just nobody's perfect and you can't think you're perfect. You gotta be willing to be humble and apologize for things you didn't do right because everybody screws up. You have to be accountable for that and when you're accountable for that then you can move on to another life. If you're arrogant, you won't even seek the light. You'll just go straight into darkness and take yourself out of an ever existing again without darkness. You may exist again, but it'll only be through darkness. But if your spirit goes to actually a dark place in the universe and actually goes to the void of darkness, then you, you won't ever return. You'll always be wandering in darkness. Your spirit will. You can take yourself to the void of nothingness if you're too arrogant. To me, people want to talk about hell. That's the only hell I know. So when you take yourself out of the love and light of Creator and take yourself into darkness out of arrogance, arrogance is the only thing a Creator won't forgive because, because you don't give the Creator a chance to forgive it. 
If you're arrogant, you won't ever look to the light. You don't ever think you did anything wrong. You just think everything you do is right and perfect. But you're not perfect. Nobody is. You can't be perfect. You can work to be better, but better and best, you know, but you can't forget being perfect. You're not doing it. But that doesn't mean we can't be powerful, you know. We all can move, have the power to move mountains. We just don't believe we can do that. I think women could do it easier than males. Our spiritual nature is powerful beyond measure. When you split an atom and you see what energy is produced from splitting one atom, that's not a theory, that's based on fact. When you split an atom, there's so much energy released and splitting one atom, and just think of how many atoms your body's made of. Just think how much energy your body houses in terms of energy. Your whole body is made of flesh, but that flesh is made of molecules, and those molecules are made of atoms. And one atom in your body can create a fantastic energy release. You're powerful beyond measure. And not saying anybody would explode and become powerful that explosive, but you're made of atoms. And we see what happens when you split one atom, the energy that's released. So you're full of them. And you have a lot of electromagnetic energy in you. And you're, there's things that we don't know how to do, but we, but maybe in the next life you'll learn. There's things I've done that I've been pretty amazed at it happened to me. I don't think that, well, look at me, I'm powerful. I don't really think like that because it's, that's not the important part. The important part is being happy. If I do all this and I'm not happy, what well, good with it? If I'm not grateful and happy, what was it for? Nothing. Be grateful and don't be greedy. Live a life of gratitude, but if you do, you won't be greedy. Don't seek revenge. Don't hate people because they're this or that. Don't have hate in your heart. In the Indian world, the richest person in the village or community was the person who gave the most. It was shared the most with people who didn't have what they had. When you were blessed with a lot of wealth, in terms of food or in terms of things, you shared it with your community, you know, you didn't hoard it. That's the difference in modern people to, in Indian culture and long tradition. No matter what community it was, they didn't hoard wealth. You know, it was shared equally was distributed equally by women because women would respect the other children. Not only wanted their children to be strong and, and have things, they wanted the other people to have the same. They didn't hold it just for themselves or their family. They shared it with other families and other clans. You know, because we are in a human race. We are human beings, so we have an obligation. Our spiritual nature to be good to each other and kind. That's what I think anyway. Get rid of greed, embrace gratitude, and seek happiness. What makes you happy? Killing people makes you happy, you gotta rethink it. It probably sounds bad, but killing people make you happy, kill yourself. Don't make everybody else suffer for your sickness. People don't like to hear that.